You're listening to the Coop Homeschool Podcast. This is your podcast for community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling. I'm Mandy. I'm Jessica. And this is The The Coop. We have 10 homeschool tools to share today. Excellent. I know. And we're going to make it easy for you to find and buy just through our show notes. Perfect. All right. But first, our scoop on the coop. We're having a back to school sale. Woohoo! Yeah. So in our store, we not only offer these fabulous shirts. If you're watching the YouTube, you can see um, one of our most popular has actually been this one. Our yeah. not all classrooms have four walls. We have it in the fun baseball tees, and then we have it in a really awesome racerback tank top. And then the stickers. They've yeah. been flying off the shelf yeah. lately. Yeah. Totally popular. The stickers. And then we got a lot of comments on our caffeine and educate at the homeschool conference oh, yeah. this year. The mm-hmm. speakers were just pointing it out left and right. Yeah. Tons and the tote bags. Buy from us. Yeah. So oh, the tote bags. People were coming up to me at the homeschool conference yep. asking where they could get one. And yeah. So you can get it in our Etsy shop. Exactly. There's also pajamas. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we've got the school uniform pajamas. So on the sh- top, it says school uniform. On the shorts, it says homeschool mom. So cute. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. And then we also have digital stuff, but yeah. those are part of our tools. And so we'll share that with you later. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's next. All right. Let's All, go. Right. All right. So let's talk about homeschool tools. So George Hugh- Herbert, do you know who that is? 17th century uh, no. poet? No. No. Yeah. I'm afraid I don't. So he said, do not wait. The time will never be just right. Start where you stand and work with whatever tools you may have at your command. And better tools will be found as you go along. So the tools we list here are now right at your fingertips. That's perfect. Yeah. All right. So let's start with number one. Okay. This one is basically our favorite simple, easy one. Yes. What is it, Jesse? Libraries. Yes. So there's a libraries app. Yes. And um, it's a simple tool. It makes learning and enjoying literature so easy, right? Right. Because you can get ebooks and audiobooks mm-hmm. on the library app just, you know, with having your membership card. Yeah, totally. And um, there's a huge variety, too. They might mm-hmm. not have everything that Audible might have, but right. they have a ton. Um, it's also perfect for our minds, too. We get to read aloud books, I mean, have books read aloud to us while we yes. shower, get ready for the day. Yeah. It's a great budget-friendly tool mm-hmm. um, for anybody, you know, who doesn't need to collect a bunch of audiobooks. You might only listen to once. You yeah. You pay $14 sometimes. Yeah. And you could do a, a family book club by listening to it in the car. Mm-hmm. And then your kid who doesn't like to read, that's something that they can listen to. Absolutely. All right. And then the second half of the library idea is the in-person. Yes. Uh, My son loves going to the library. And it's a great tool in two ways. They get to see the a mass number of books that are available to them and how information is right there to be able to just browse different titles and actually see book covers. You know, Mm -hmm. when we're talking about digital, they can't see it and touch it and get a sense for how long it is. You know, and my daughter cares about that kind of thing. She cares how long the book is. And, and then, um, on the other side of that, my son loves going there and being on the computers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he gets a chance to be on these educational computers and play these games. And he's actually, with his new learning leaps lately and being able to really recognize numbers and letters, he's playing all new games, Mm -hmm. not just the cars and trucks and puzzles. You know, he's really doing stuff, which is really cool. And we don't do educational apps for him. Yeah. It's not a tool I prefer using at home. And so going to the library is such a fun event for him. And so it kind of feeds us all to be at the library. Yeah. It's really neat exposure. And uh, you and in our last podcast episode with, Kathy, an mm-hmm. experienced homeschool mom, you two were talking about how wonderful the library is. Yeah. And I thought this was really interesting when you want to look for a topic, mm-hmm. just seeing all the books in that category in one space yes. and getting to flip through them all. Yeah. And there'll be books you didn't even know existed that aren't even offered on Amazon. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's an amazing resource. And so it's actually something on my list I got to go do for our American history unit study I'm putting together is, is going there and seeing reference books, biographies, these things that there's just too many of them to Mm -hmm. sort through online. But if I can go and look at a tangible book and kind of say, oh, this has information I know I want. This is a book. I'm going to add it to the list. And then then I know I can borrow it from the library when we get to it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's such a dopamine release when you uh, get to go to what looks like a bookstore and then take these books home with you for free. 
And rent movies. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. We rented Despicable totally. Me 3 well, for like an entire week. We rented, <laughs> um, what was the Jamaican? Cool Runnings. Yes. We rented Cool Runnings accidentally for about six months and owed hundreds of dollars because yeah. when you are past due at that point in time, it was a dollar a day. Right. COVID now? They it's just all, auto renew. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. So check out the library in your county. And if you don't know what your library app is, then when you go into the library, just mm -hmm. ask what's what's the Audible library yeah. app. Yeah. Yeah. Audiobook. All right. Number two, the Homeschool Starter oh, Pack yes. Volume 1. So that's something we developed because yeah. we knew people needed it. It's a downloadable short activity book for homeschool parents, new and seasoned. Mm -hmm. It helps you define your homeschool mission, plan your year, set up your space, find curriculum that fits you and your child and promotes ways for your child to learn independently. Uh, the first, these are the first five steps and they're a great way to reset the year to make your homeschool life yours and not somebody else's. It's right. all about exploring your interests and your child's interest. The, the space that you appreciate, the, the space that's magical for your child. And even like the curriculum questions, they're asking you to consider your philosophy and and they're actually helping you find that by asking you these questions. So um, it's asking you questions like, uh, what role do you wanna play in your child's education? Mm -hmm. And what are the subjects that are highest priority to you? And that helps find your path. Yeah. So we help you do that with that. And you can download it from yes. our Etsy shop. All right, and if you can't find our Etsy shop, just go to our website and then it'll direct you there at the shop. All right, number three, the Homeschool Starter Pack, volume two. So we had the first five steps, which are all so important, the mission yes. and developing your why, basically you're doing this and the point of all this. But now we have volume two, which are the next five steps. So we take you on a journey. We, we help you figure out the essentials of a homeschool day. Mm -hmm. Then we help you find or create a co-op through our questionnaire. We um, help you teach your values. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the gifts of homeschooling, right? Is getting to teach your values. We um, help you find joy in the moment. Mm -hmm. And we want you to take care of yourself. So, so we go into that. We have worksheets for you to fill out. And, and it's not a huge, thick activity book. Mm -hmm. But all those things are a great tool to really get your mind and heart and soul in a right place a good place to figure out where you want to go. Absolutely. And you can download that on our shop. Okay, so our newest pack is the co-op pack. Yes, this one's one we're very excited about because it's a mission near and dear to our heart to encourage families to find a group of homeschoolers that they fit in with and that you can have a group with. It doesn't have to look like ours. Right. But how can you find the right people for you? Um, because it brings us so much benefit and it's just such a blessing to us and our kids. It totally is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there's already a number of co-ops out there called Classical Conversations. And so that's mm -hmm. like an academic. It's a formal co-op. Formal co-op. Mm -hmm. It meets weekly. There's yeah. commitment, you know, pre-work, post-work. Right. And Parent you... commitment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's awesome for people who want that, but that wasn't mm -hmm. something we wanted. So yeah. we uh, came up with our own co-op. If you listen to our, our co-op um, episodes one, two, and three, you'll see what kind of co-op we have. And we want to help you establish one of those. We have right. so many people asking us, how do I set up a co-op like yours? How, what, like, what kind of rules do I have? Should I sh charge fees? Uh, you know, what right. kind of commitment should I require? And so we have that in this co-op pack as like a shortcut to all that because we put our best practices in this pack. So we have a co-op questionnaire helping you mm -hmm. to figure out what kind of co-op you want. And then we have our sample handbook. Yeah. So there's a no drama policy in there. <laughs> no one can get their feelings hurt if people hang out together outside the co-op without you. <laughs> Amen. We also have a membership dues questionnaire to figure out if that's something you need or not or want. Right. And then we have the membership dues policy and procedure. And then we also have co-op theme ideas in that pack. So we have had a number of years of wonderful experiences and mm -hmm. we want to pass that on to you and make it easy for you to create your own coop group. Yes. So the, the co-op pack is a great tool for you to basically find your homeschool group and to hone in on committed friendships and enriching unique learning experiences together. Okay. Number 
five, the child's interest questionnaire. Yes. So we developed this because we, what do, what do we want besides teaching what we value? Yeah. <laughs> like what, what do we right. want? We want them to be interested. We want to know what they want to learn and what are, they are excited to do. And so how better to do it than asking them? Yeah, exactly. So um, I'm holding it up here. It's this questionnaire. It's um, how many pages is it? Two, four, six. It's six pages. And it's something you can interview your child with saying, are you interested? Which animals would you be interested in mm -hmm. learning about or cultures or technology or performing art? There's a whole list of, of different topics, places, ideas that they have how they want to grow, what they want to learn, what skills do they want to develop. You can write it down for them as you talk with them about it, or you can just give it to them and let them fill out the the spaces that they want to fill out. And they just leave the rest blank. And yep. my kids have been doing it for years, and I don't usually incorporate a whole bunch of it just because... You have your plans. I have my plans. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to know, oh, like this person is still interested in animals. So right. I know that's important. I know to focus on that. Or, wow, she's moved on from animals. This isn't even right. on her Sometimes list. it's enlightening in that way. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's a neat record of their interests, too, even mm -hmm. if you just have it for that. That is also downloadable on our Etsy, Etsy shop. So check it out. And our number six tool is the About Me activity book. Yes. So you've heard me talk about this a lot. Yeah. It is my kids' favorite thing to do. We do it the first week of school. So if you're trying to figure out what to do for the first day, day, first week of school that is unique and fun and and can bring joy and life to your homeschool, try the About Me activity book. It's eight pages, but two of them are for them to do art. Okay. So one of them is their portrait, and another one is make whatever art you want on this sheet, whatever medium you want to do. And then cool. the other pages are bits about me, like I am, I love, I wish, I hope. It's kind of a fun way mm -hmm. to see how they finish the sentence. Their favorite things for each topic, write your favorite things, song, music, story, place. And, um, and then about my school. So what if they go to a school two days a week? Right. Or one day, or they consider dance class their school. Right. Who knows what they consider their school? And so that's right. kind of fun interesting too. to hear. Yeah. yeah. And I have asked them every year who their teacher is. And sometimes it's me. And sometimes it's their piano teacher. Yeah. You just, it's so fun funny. to see who they pick. And then um, about their faith. I have a whole page about that that you can use if if that's something you teach in your home. But even if it isn't, it'd be interesting to see what they say. What are their answers? How yeah. do we get here? Why are we here? What happens when we die? It'd be fun to see whether or not you believe in God, what they have to say about all that. Totally. And then you know if it's something you need to help them work through. Right. What is their understanding? Yeah. And then uh, I also have a, a motto on the back, like, do your best, let your light shine, be kind, be fabulous. And we ask them to circle what motto out of the 10 that are here mm -hmm. um, to pick which one they want to represent their heart this year towards That's learning. Sweet. And so it's just really fun. And the way we use it, what's so cool about it is we do it the first week. So they do like one or two pages a day. They're always so excited to work on it. And then they can't wait to look at the previous years. And they are giggling and crying. They're right. laughing so hard. I can't hard. believe I said that. Yeah. And especially the five and six year old ones that they did. Yeah. And because they, I was writing what they told me just mm -hmm. word for word. And it's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> and I think Maisie started doing hers when she was about three. Aww, it's so funny. Right. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. And um, Aww, it's precious. I think the song War has been on there like for two or three years running. Whenever it came out, I don't know when it came out, but yeah. um, that's been one of her favorite songs. So it's it's just so fun. And, and then they present it to their dad too at the end and they can't wait. It's such a highlight. So that's downloadable too. And it's on our Etsy shop. So check that out. So Jesse, why don't you talk about binding machines? So I gave in last year and I needed to join the binding club. And I decided I didn't just want the comb binding. I wanted the spiral binder. Mm -hmm. I wanted I wanted that just neatness of it. And so I went for it. And the machine is big, it's heavy, but super durable. And um, we bind a ton of stuff. Oh, yeah. 
And it's perfect because we download curriculum and so I have the option to print it. And I print the student book usually, I don't print mine. Um, I use the PDF on my computer for the most part. But my kids, I print their books and then I can spiral bind it. And yeah. so it's a big old punch. I feel like it's like a old school time clock. Oh yeah, totally. Time punch. That's yeah, it does look very <laughs> retro, doesn't it? <laughs> so funny. And so I love that. And then I get to sit there and twist the spirals in. It does have an auto feature, but I never figured that out very well. I'm still manually doing stuff. But I just like spinning the cone. The You're spiral so good at it. I've there. watched you. You're yeah. a pro. I am a pro. I'm yeah. pretty fast at it now. And then I even got the clear sheets that go on each side. Yeah, and so the ability great. to customize anything is great. And so um, you have the less expensive option. Yeah, I have the comb binding. Mm -hmm. So I would say spiral binding is much more, is superior to comb binding. But the only thing I can say that's nice about comb binding, it's easier to add pages in the back because right. it just opens right back up again and you can add some more and then put the plastic totally. sheet back on and close it back up again. Right. The spiral bind, you actually have to crimp the end so that it doesn't just spin out. And so you could work its mm -hmm. way out, but then you might have to use tear a new... Tear the holes or something. Well, you might... No, you won't tear the holes. Oh, okay. It'll come out nicely, If but you'd have to cut it off and get a new spiral to oh, put yeah. in there, a new coil. Yeah. So that would just be a loss of that. That's true. But you you decide what you got Yeah, do. and uh, there's very few things you have to keep adding to unless it's their personal yeah. workbook. So I like to borrow yours. Yes to do my gather around downloadables mm -hmm. and stuff that I print out for my student books. And then I like to print out mine too. I, right. I like to take notes and Cause stuff. Cause a spiral you can open all the way around yes. and flip over so that you're still only having a single page. The comb, it doesn't do that. It doesn't. And, lay flat. and what I figured out with the comb, I have to get a much bigger comb so I can flip it, but you're always afraid it's like, Oh, it doesn't feel good when it turns. Right. But it does the job. So if you want to pay yeah. less money, I would definitely do comb binding. It's a great tool. But if you have a little extra, I would do the spiral binding. And then, or if you know someone that has one, you could get the other one. And then you guys can totally rotate sharing like we do. Yes. Although you never really need the comb binding. No, but, not now that I have the spiral binding. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great because like the downloadables are cheaper to get. Yes. And if you have your printing ink isn't that expensive or you don't have expensive paper you can definitely come out way ahead if you if you just buy the downloadable yeah okay so that was number seven number eight the art cart you have yes. an art cart i do i don't use it for art what do you um, use it for i keep my stuff in there because the oh, kids have their yeah. bookshelves and i don't have a shelf in the room that we homeschool it's my big dining multi-purpose room and so their shelves are there, so they can go and grab their stuff, but my office is not close by, and so I wanted a place to keep my stuff and then keep it kind of uh, movable and accessible. So if I didn't want it out in the dining room, it could go back into my office. Yeah, that's cool. So on the top shelf, I keep all of the books that I'm going through with the kids. On the middle shelf, I've got my personal stuff, so my Bible's in there and mm -hmm. my journal and um, things and then on the bottom I leave it open to put my computer in there so oh, nothing yeah, gets smashed cool. yeah yeah that's great I have the art I have two art carts okay I, I just call them art carts because it's fun but one of them is actually an art right. cart it's and, just a utility cart yeah and you can get them at Michael's and I got mine on Amazon Me for too. about 30 bucks mm -hmm. sometimes I they have a sale them, oh, yeah I was gonna say I think they're on um specials right now with the back to school stuff oh, happening. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I almost got a second one. They have all different colors. What color yeah. is yours? I have green, like Are a sage you? Oh, green. Oh, pretty. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have, uh, that's like a vintage green. I mm -hmm. like that. I have two white ones. Yes. I'm pointing at them in my room. Them. Yeah. And um, I, I have three levels on mine, which I like because yes. it's at the kid level, but my mother-in-law has one that's four levels oh. and, and because she has so much art supplies. She needed the four levels, which right. I haven't really seen the four levels. Yeah. I feel like I'm so it must be taller too. It is. Yeah. It's a whole level taller. Hmm. It's harder to use the bottom two levels because you don't have unending space to pull the thing exactly. out. Exactly. So There's your tall stuff just has there. to Yeah. And then some of them oh, like Target has attachables yes. to the carts. Mm -hmm. So you can um, buy these things that attach to it to add like pencils and stuff to the outside where mine are all on the inside and little circle containers yeah. and stuff. I think they're universal though. I think you can get the little 
clips for either to go way. on any yeah. any utility cart. Yeah, but they were selling them at like in the dollar spot mm-hmm. for a while. And then my other art cart is all of their daily work. So it has their their Matthew C and their um, I have their spiral bound now timelines that I got Perfect. at the library for free a giveaway. Uh, and then I have their other curriculum there that mm-hmm. they can pull out their work, workbook and work from. And then I use the magazine uh, dividers. That's what holds their stuff. Right. My Mine were cardboard, so they're kind of ripping. So I'm going to switch to the metal when, okay. when budget allows. And then we put extra paper on the bottom, extra books on the second level. So it can be used yeah. for so many things. can roll around. Yes. And it's cute. It's it cute. cute. Okay, so that is number eight. Number nine is Facebook groups. Yes, for sure. So you want to plug into probably a local group because it's really nice to know what's going on in your local homeschool community. And then you probably want to plug into interest-based Facebook groups. So if you are a Christian-based homeschooler, that page is fantastic because you get lots of recommendations or people will say, hey, we watched this. I have a caution for you because this is the values that we hold. You might be on the lookout for this too. Um, Or, you know, there's um, game schooling, there's free homeschool ideas. There's a ton of interest-based Facebook homeschool groups, which are excellent resources. Mm -hmm. And they provide just a lot of good information. You get a lot of questions in there. And so it's a great place to just go and see how you can help somebody and recommend something or read the recommendations and gain stuff for your own homeschool. Yeah, even like the Gather Round. So Gather Mm -hmm. Round is a curriculum. We love unit studies. They have their own group and people are like, oh, what did you guys do with the body one? And then you can see all the comments that people did with the body. Or I want to buy one more unit study. Which one do you suggest? And which which one does everyone love? And then you can definitely see which ones people love. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So I I love the Facebook groups. You can also find, um, do meetups. So you could do... Uh, I really want uh, a Charlotte Mason nature study group exactly. and I want to do a weekly hike. Who wants to go on a weekly hike? And if you don't have a co-op that already has like-minded mm-hmm. people in your philosophy or in your activities, or you don't have people to pull from, that's a great place to do it for your area, right? Yes. So I see that all the time. We're looking for a place people to hike with us on Monday mornings. Who's mm-hmm. available? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So check check that out. All right. Number 10. Other homeschool moms. Big resource. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I get some of my favorite tangible advice. Yeah. And recommendations that I really value from my other homeschool friends and then people that I meet because I get the chance to really understand why that item worked or didn't work for their kids rather than just some stranger's opinion on Facebook. So while that is helpful, yeah, it's definitely not the same as having in-person homeschool moms that you can talk to and discuss things with or share information with. Yeah, I, we were at the homeschool convention and it was you, me, and another co-op mom. Mm-hmm. And I was talking with this booth saying, oh, maybe I want to sign up for this. And... Um, our friend was there and she was like, oh no, Mandy, you're not going to like that. That is not for you. Right. That, that is, does not fit your personality and how you want to do things. And I was like, oh, like, and she's like, yeah, no, I know all about it. Yeah. yeah. So, but it was great because then I didn't really waste as much time. Yeah. Because if people know you, they kind of know like, oh, you want more of a hands-off thing probably for this mm-hmm. or more hands-on thing for this. So, yeah. or this child might appreciate this more. And so it's just cool yeah. When they have insight into you, to your kids, to your family, to what how your home is set up, yes. and the type of ideas and advice. And also, it's just fun. It's just fun to, yes. to have homeschool moms. So I hate to call it a tool, but it's just it, it just enriches your life in such a huge way. For sure. And makes there so basically homeschool moms are our coworkers. Yes. And when I used to work in an office. Our co-worker, we'd go out to lunch together. Mm-hmm. We would probably spend half the day, a third of the time, chatting. Yes. <laughs> and not a lot of work it got done, right? And But that was just our social time. Right. And, and sometimes we can feel alone in our homes. And so having that that group of women or even just one or two to, to talk to and hang out with, it's just, yeah. it, make, it revives you and, and reminds you you're part of a community. Definitely. Okay. So I have food for thought. Ooh. So we have the 10, right? We yes. have, I'm just going to list them off real quick. Libraries on the app and in person. The Homeschool Starter Pack, Volume 1, which is five 
Initial Steps, Homeschool Starter Pack Volume 2, which are the next five steps, Co-op Pack to help you start your co-op, Yes. the Child's Interest Questionnaire, self-explanatory, About Me Activity Book, number seven, Binding Machines, number eight, The Art Cart, number nine, Facebook Groups, and number 10, Other Homeschool Moms. Mm -hmm. So food for thought. Okay. Comedian and medical doctor also, mm -hmm. Ken mm -hmm. Jung. Is that how we say his name? Sure. He's in those Judd Apatow movies. He said, you can have all the tools in the world, but if you don't genuinely believe in yourself, it's useless. So I'm just going to read what I wrote about that. Okay. I think trusting your instinct and calling and your calling to parent and raise your children is the foundation of being equipped as a homeschooling parent. So these 10 tools are definitely going to help you homeschool and enrich your life. But belief in the process, trusting in your convictions, that's really going to help you use these tools. That mm -hmm. belief is made pure and firm by reading your Bible or devotional each day, if, if uh, you have that. Mm -hmm. And that's something I'm going to work on yes, this new school year. That. Yeah, because that will set my mind, my heart, my soul, right? It will remind me that I can use these tools to glorify God like yeah. that's who I'm seeking first in exactly what I'm doing I actually um two years ago went through a homeschool mom devotional oh and it was really helpful because she already did that work of relating it to your homeschool both the struggles the good things you know the things we want to focus on and so that was um a helpful one and I'll link it I don't remember the name of it but I'll link it in the show notes for you guys all right well cool well there's our, our 10 tools so now it's time for the Coop Q&A, where, where we answer your questions. Okay, so the question today is, what do you do first thing in the morning? Well, in my house, every morning is a different day. So some mornings are days where we're just going to stay at home for a while, and then three days a week, we got to get up and get out of the house. Okay. Or that's how it was last school year. So um, it depends on the morning. Yeah. If we have a stay at home day, I let us get up leisurely. I make sure everybody gets fed and usually breakfast is serve yourself. Once in a while, I'll do something when I'm feeling really spunky. Wow. Yeah, we'll do oatmeal or pancakes. Wow. And then we, I kind of gauge what my kids are doing. If they're really involved in something that they've chosen on their own, I'll let it ride and give them a, we're going to start... We're going to come and sit down at the table. I try not to say we're going to start school. Oh, yeah. But we're yeah. going to come sit down at the table together at 10, you know, or mm -hmm. 9.30, depending mm -hmm. on what time of the morning it's yeah, already become. Yeah, that's a great time. Yeah. yeah. And then that way it gives them a heads up that that's happening, and then they can decide, oh, no, actually, I'd like to do that now. You know, maybe they're just mm -hmm. killing time sometimes. Or my daughter, if she's in the middle of writing her novel... She'll say, oh, can I have an extra 15 minutes? And then I'm not tearing her away. I yeah. want it to be a joyful thing for us all to come together. Mm. And so having expectations is important. And since our mornings aren't consistent every day of the week, we don't have a consistent time we sit down. Right. So I want to be careful not to be too crazy about that. Because mm -hmm. she even doesn't have consistent time where she can just yeah, be and have her free time. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of gauging on how I, I read the room. Yeah, that's great. I yes. love it. I do want to start getting up earlier, though, than my kids. And just having me time in the morning, working on something like a devotional, or just really getting my mind ready for the day so mm -hmm. that I can be more intentional and non-reactive to yeah. what's going on with my kids and be more immersed in it. Um, so that's a goal I have set for this coming school year. That's exciting. It's a big one. I think I do that the, the first maybe two days of school. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. All right. So for me, I very similar. Yeah. I, I like everyone to sleep as long as they want. Yes. And it's usually me sleeping the longest. And then I'm on my phone for an hour. <laughs> you know, I mean, checking all your comments on Instagram. I know. I have all these questions I need to answer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'd like to uh, get off the phone morning. Yeah. 
but typically I'm, I'm out of bed by like 8 30 8 45 and then by 9 30 or 10 we get started now again like the first week of school we probably start around 8 30 right and i'm like so stoked with myself and i'm right. like we're gonna we're gonna yes. do this all year it's amazing yes i'm so awesome yeah you are best in the morning you know right. and and it's it's so great but and we were doing the warm-up dance and we're <laughs> you know we're we're doing everything that uh -huh. we're supposed to then week two comes yeah and then it's like all right you know we're cool now if you wake me up it's school time kids and then they're like shh don't shh. go in there yeah but um I do love it when we get started early and I I I feel it's accomplishing yeah, for sure because you have the whole day now yeah that could be used spontaneously I can work out in the afternoon that's when yeah. your free time oh, yeah that's is. when the spontaneous happens because you got you you got to develop their minds in the way you really wanted to right. for a certain point right. part of the day and now it's it's up to them how they spend it or or right. you know fun yeah. stuff you do. The 10 a.m. start time is rough because by the time you've kind of got through enough or it's interrupted by lunch, you know, you're getting to lunch, then by that time, if you have afternoon activities, yeah. you're kind of butted up against there. There's no spontaneous time to go to the park or the yeah, playground yeah. real quick. Yeah, and sometimes I, I start as late as like 2 o'clock or 2.30, mm -hmm. and then my husband comes home around 3.30 or 4, and I'm like, oh, we've got hours to do. Sorry. We just got started. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but then we're all tired, we're less motivated, and it's less fun. It really is. So I just really want to be good about that, knowing that I will feel, all of us will feel such satisfaction yeah. in what we're doing. You know what I really liked last school year when I was feeling more encouraged and inspired was actually getting outside in the morning to mm. do our school. Cool. So to do our read alouds outside because the morning was still cool enough. We can eat out there. And so it just made that part special totally. and didn't feel like you're stuck in the house from the beginning you wake up in the day. You're right. So for us that kind of worked. And so maybe I need to revisit And it's still that. shady and cool. Mm -hmm. I had a food I used to have a futon outside that apparently wasn't in a sunbrella fabric which is outdoor fabric. Lipsy. So it got torn up pretty quickly, but it was a really cool place. I we used to that. go out yeah. there and sit there, and then yeah. I bring the couple books I was going to read aloud and and do that with them. And it was really great in this corner of the shade. Right. Yeah. Right. So you just, uh, it's something like that, you know, maybe make it a special place might yeah. be inspiring for all of us. But sitting in my mess sometimes, yeah. you know, like it just makes me think, oh, I should just do the dishes now. Well, yeah. And then I keep pushing things off. I know. I feel like if I need to get this done first, and even if I try to work out first, that just pushes the day. Mm -hmm. And now I have this morning time. If you listen to our planning our year episode 81, mm -hmm. I have this morning time I'm going to be doing. Yep. And so that would be a great thing to do outside yeah. or go to Starbucks and call right. it our coffee talk time right. or whatever. Right. It'd be really fun. Yeah, I agree. Thanks for listening. We love your support. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast leave a rating and review to let us know how we're doing and share our podcast with your friends who need a little community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling. <laughs>